morning and happy Monday. So we are on our second week of the Shadow Hunter September thing that I'm trying to do. And as I left off last week with you guys, I did finish Red Scrolls of Magic and was trying to get my vlog up. I didn't end up fully getting that up before I went to bed last night just because of the fact that it was taking forever to like upload to YouTube, but it is now 10.45, I've gotten that done. I've updated the CC and stuff. Presley's having an early nap. He still basically has two naps a day. We're trying to get it down to one. It's not fully working because he'll just put himself to sleep, which means he actually is tired. So we're not worrying about it, but he does still have two naps a day. But I did actually read a little bit more last night before I fell asleep, and so I am 75 pages into Clockwork Angel. I'm still behind on my like daily goal in the fact that I started off really bad last week. My first couple days, I did not hit my goal. Um, so I have some extra pages that I do need to make up. However, after reading Red Scrolls of Magic and jumping into Clockwork Angel, the text size, the font size is much bigger again, and so I'm finding it easier to get into. It's very easy to just sort of like speed through. It almost feels like the pages, even though I'm not necessarily speeding through, because I've only read, I was gonna hold it upside down, I've only read Clockwork Angel once. So this is definitely a good thing that I'm rereading it. I've been wanting to reread it for a while and that was another reason that I really wanted to do this. Um, we did have a little bit of info dumping again when Tessa ends up at the London Institute because, you know, gotta tell her what shadow hunters are. However, I didn't feel it as jarring as when they were having to explain to Clary in the City of Bones. So I do think maybe we just didn't get as much because they're assuming that you read the other ones or maybe it just was written a little bit better um but yeah that's 75 pages in she barely has gotten there um I don't really want to give stuff away but we follow Tessa I will let you guys know right now Will was never my favorite Jem was my favorite so I never hated him but I never fully understood all the Will stands so we'll see, but again, yeah, very easy to get into. It starts off with like Will fighting a demon, you know, good old fashioned shadow huntery stuff. I need to read more before I get into it more because when you really consider 75 pages of this book, 75 pages is, is you know, quite a good chunk, but it's only like 15%. So I need to get into it more before I give more thought. Okay, so it's almost 8 o'clock. We're gonna be putting the baby to bed. We had tostadas for dinner, which was... Hi, Presley. <laughs> he heard me talking. Presley! Hi, baby! Are you outside the baby jail? But we had tostadas for dinner, which was really, really good. I can basically only cook like Italian or Mexican, so that's what we did. Um, Presley had mostly refried beans and ground beef and avocado and then some peaches, so not too bad. Yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> we are going to be going upstairs to put him to bed soon, so I did want to just sort of update you guys. I am still working on Clockwork Angel. I'm on page 180 right now. Um, I'm really enjoying it. They're getting to the part about like automatons and this kind of stuff and so at the same time I don't have a lot to say about it necessarily um, but this is a like historical book. It takes place in the 1800s. I, they gave a date in here somewhere. 1878 and I find that sometimes I just don't click very much with more sort of like historical in the 1800s types of books, but that has never been the case here. I've always really, really liked this, 
and I think it's because of the writing style like again it's very very easy to get into just like her Mortal Instruments series um, but one of the things that I find that I don't like in historical stuff is when they try to make the language overly flowery or um, stuff that you see sometimes in the like more classic novels um, and sometimes I just find that too hard to read but that's not the case here you do have hints of that sort of older writing style older way of speaking they talk about like Christian names that kind of stuff because it's Tessa's our main character but she's like Miss Gray and then there's like Will Herondale who would be like Mr. Herondale but then like his Christian name is Will so it's like his like first name it's it's, it's all basically based on like how comfortable and familiar you are with the person um, so they do have like hints of stuff like that but it's not an overly different writing style and so I still find it very easy to get into um, this is sort of where we are the bottom part is the part that I'm at in order to get better with my page count for today I should finish this book tonight I don't know if that's gonna happen only because we still have to put the baby to bed and um, I, I don't know how late I'm actually going to like stay up I'm gonna get as much reading done as possible so that I'm not you know too far behind but I think ultimately I'm just gonna have to see how it goes and let you guys know in the morning good morning and happy Tuesday yes Tuesday I am forgetting all the days of the week now I did not get to finish Clockwork Angel last night. Um, I just, it got to like 11 p.m. I think it was, and I was just like, I'm going to bed. But I am on page 347, so chapter 16. Um, it's going really well so far. I Like I mentioned before, I'm really liking the writing style. I'm really liking the characters. I for sure still have Jem as my favorite. However, I also forgot how much I love sort of Henry and Charlotte as, you know, running the Institute. They're married and the dynamic between them. It hasn't fully, you know, come to fruition yet because they're not like fully like the main. I mean, they're not the main characters. They're like secondary characters. But I do remember more stuff with them from later in the series that I do remember really really loving. I also love the fact that we have you know some of the characters that are going to show up in later Mortal Instruments books um, or even in previous Mortal Instruments books because we do have Magnus in here for like one scene. We have um, one of the heads of the Vampire Institute in New York that we have not actually met yet in the Mortal Instruments but we do get to meet her in here um, and I'm just liking that sort of stuff like I remember reading them interspersed between the Mortal Instruments ones when I first read these and I love the crossover stuff um, so I have just over a hundred pages left I believe of this book and yeah like a hundred and thirty ish pages left of this book um, I do want to finish this today for sure and then I definitely need to start Clockwork Prince as well because based on my calculations, I don't know the full number, but I'm like 540 or 50 pages behind right now, so I'm over a day behind. No, not over a day behind. I need to read like 550 pages today to hit today's goal. So I'm like today and then like 200-ish pages behind. So it's actually not horrible. <laughs> For a second I scared myself there. Um, but I do need to read some of Clockwork Prince so I don't get a full day behind. Um, also, I was just remembering one thing that I think I don't like in this book as much is how much they quote other books. I can understand Tessa doing it a little bit because you know it's like 1800 something and she her main like love of life is books which I can understand but she apparently has read certain books multiple times knows some of the quotes but then like Will also does that and so there's been some times where they just sort of like exchange quotes with each other and I don't know it's just not my thing I, I, I feel like it's a little bit too false sounding like I, I'm sure there are some people who they memorized quotes from books or they have like a photographic memory and they just know quotes from books but for me personally it just feels a little bit extra um but yeah 
about 100 pages less for this one. We are going to be having lunch eventually, um, because it's like 11.30. I was watching some booktube stuff, so even though I have pages I need to read of this today, I'm so far behind on booktube watching, um, so I've been trying to watch some people's. I think most of it is September TBRs because that's like the most recent stuff and even though I'm behind I decided to watch some of the more recent videos right now than going back and watching older videos. I'm behind. I think one of the things I'm gonna have to do either later this year or at the beginning of next year is not pick as many books for my TBR per month so that it doesn't feel like I have to finish them. That way I can slow down a little bit on my reading and make time for like booktube watching. Um, obviously that's not going to happen this month too much because I, I, I need to read like 18 books if I'm going to finish this, um, but it's something I've been thinking about. Okay, so I have finished Clockwork Angel now, which means I've read like 130, almost 140 pages today. I will be starting Clockwork Prince very, very shortly. Um, again, really, really enjoyed it. I do feel like the first book for its like, so for this one and uh, City of Bones are not my favorite. Again, I haven't gone through Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess quite yet, but I did really still like it, but I remember liking those ones more. However, one other thing I did want to mention, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but one thing that I have noticed after reading the first three books of the Mortal Instruments, Red Scrolls of Magic, and now this one, Cassandra Clare is really good about throwing suspicion off of the actual bad guy or not even necessarily the big bad guys sometimes, but like the accomplices. She likes to throw suspicion to other people or just not reveal right away. He got the diapers. Who the bad guys are. So um, really well done. I loved this and the twist. I knew it was coming obviously, but I loved it. Now I will be starting Clockwork Prince. Like I said, I've read about 130-ish, let's just say 130 pages um, today so far. So in order to hit my goal for today in general, I should read another like 211 pages of this one. If I want to catch up, I should almost finish this tonight. I don't know if that's going to happen. It is currently almost 5 p.m. So we'll be having dinner within the next hour and a half probably. So I'm going to try and get as much reading done as possible. We have Presley walking around with his diapers. You got your diaper? I go get you. I go get you. I go get you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm on like the first page of Clockwork Prince and it's pulling up how, pulling up, it's basically stating how Will can see ghosts and like not all shadow hunters or anybody can see ghosts unless like the ghosts want to be seen except for he can. Why are we learning about this in the second book? I don't know, I feel like there are certain things every so often, probably because it's such a long series where Cassandra Clare just like oh, this would be cool, let's do that. Like, I don't know if there was a plan for it or not. Maybe they just didn't go anywhere with ghosts in the first place, in the first book. However, they were, you know, at the very beginning of the first book, investigating a death of a mundane. You would think maybe there would be a ghost around that. I don't know. I just, I'm starting to read it and I'm like, hmm. I feel like that should have been something. Also, not in this book, but it was something that I had to look up um, and I just forgot to mention it last week, but... In one of the Mortal Instruments books, so it was either the first or the second book, probably the second one, it mentions that Magnus is like 300-ish, or at least Alec mentions that Magnus is like 300-ish, and then in City of Glass, Magnus tells Alec before like the climax near the end that he's like 700 or 800, and then I read Red Scrolls of Magic, and Magnus again says he's like 300 or something, um, and so I was like, okay, did she just 
forget how old Magnus was. And again, Red Scrolls of Magic came out last year, so it's been a while. Um, so I had to look it up, and actually, apparently, a lot of people that were talking about Magnus's age were talking about, like, City of Glass versus City of Heavenly Fire versus the Bane Chronicles, because apparently that's where they talk about it a lot. And in City of Glass, he does say that he's, like, 700 or 800, and then in City of Heavenly Fire, he is back to, like, 300 or something. And then in the Bane Chronicles, apparently, he mentions that he lies about his age a lot so i think the consensus is that he's like 300 almost 400 um i feel like cassandra claire might have just forgotten that she said it was going to be 700 or 800 in uh, city of glass because i don't see why that would be a thing like that many years to lie about especially since he was talking to alec i believe i don't know um but yeah i feel like maybe just because it is such a long series there are probably small inconsistencies that I'm going to be picking up on because of the fact that I'm reading them all back to back. Um, I don't think necessarily that the Will being able to see ghosts is an inconsistency in Clockwork Prince. I feel like it's probably more just it was never talked about in the first one and now it's a, it's a new thing. But I feel like we didn't get any hints about it whatsoever in the last one and I don't know. It was just something that I decided to mention. Good morning, it is Wednesday. I do say morning, and it is. But it's like a little after 11 and people are starting to make lunch because they're doing like homemade dumplings. So there's noise in the background, forgive it. Um, I am still on Clockwork Prince. I definitely hit my 341 page mark though yesterday. I think I got to 342 total pages. So I am still a little bit behind, but it's, it's not like I added any pages to me being behind, so I'm happy with that. Which does mean I am currently on chapter 10, page 208 in Clockwork Prince. And one thing, hi baby. Is your ball you got in the diapers? Beer pong. Right? <laughs> Playing beer pong with the diapers. But one thing I was going to say, I was, I was trying to keep all of my thoughts in order last night, is I think I'm starting to compare these books to the Moral Instruments. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, one thing that I also found very, very interesting is this morning when I woke up, I had... <laughs> 14 likes on my Clockwork Angel review that I wrote years ago. Like the first time I read Clockwork Angel, I wrote a review on Goodreads. And because I finished it yesterday and like it updated in the system, I'm getting new people finding that review. And it's not a bad review. However, I do say in the review that I can't compare the both series for Cassandra Clare because they are very different. And that is true. However, one thing that I did say in this vlog earlier is that I like or I remember liking the Infernal Devices more than I like the Mortal Instruments. And I don't think that's necessarily true as of right now. I'm about one and a half books into the Infernal Devices and I'm currently, I think, liking a lot of the action and stuff like that in the first three books of the Mortal Instruments more. You can't have this book. You can't even see you. <gasps> there you are. <laughs> you don't want to be on camera? Um, but so I think I'm like, I liked those first three books more like for the actual like story structure and action stuff these are still really really good gem is still one of my absolute favorite characters for me personally i have always liked gem and he is like super high up there even with all the characters that i have you know read about before however i do not like will really as a character I mean, I can understand where he's coming from because, I'll put spoilers at the bottom, we just got to the part in here where he informs Magnus that he is cursed by a demon and so because of that, he pushes away people. So he does have an excuse for why he's acting the way he's acting. However, I, even knowing what the excuse is, don't like him all that much. 
Um, it's just not my thing. Also, he and Tessa like to do sort of like, almost like quoting contests. I know it's not a contest, but they like to quote old books. And yes, for them, it's probably not like super old. They're like in the 1870s, 1878, something like that. But that's not my thing especially classical novels that they're reading. It's not my thing. They like to compare things to books a lot. And I love books, but like those aren't my thing. The comparing things to books, the quotings of other books is not my thing. So that is taking me out of it a little bit. Also, I'm gonna nitpick a little bit here. I don't think Cassandra Clare is the best at writing certain romances. I know I talked about this a little bit in um, the first vlog when I talked about City of Bones because the kiss in there I felt like there was no lead-up to it and now in here um, We have a good romance for me personally and a not so good romance And so again, I guess I'll just put spoilers at the bottom because it is sort of love triangle-y A lot of people that have either read this will know what I'm talking about uh, I don't know if they'll like my take on it, but um, you guys should know what I'm talking about. Some people that even haven't read this might know about the different love options that they have in this book series. Um, but, spoilers, for me personally, I feel like Will and Tessa's romance is not as developed um, in the way that I feel like a lot of it sort of happened in book one at least on Will's side from what I am imagining because we don't get to see him and Tessa being very close but when he's talking to Magnus about his curse he does talk about or maybe he doesn't talk about but like it is revealed that he is in love with Tessa and I feel like that again sort of just came out of left field we never really got to see the lead up to it I know Tessa has some feelings for Will and I feel like Tessa's feelings are done a little bit better than Will's feelings but like that romance I've never really fully felt however in this second book especially we don't really see it in the first book but in the second book we then get the lead up to the romance with Tessa and Jem and I really feel like you can really see both of them discovering their feelings one in the way that Tessa I guess Cassandra Clare talks about Jem when it's Tessa's point of view like you can just see the way he cares for her but then also I love the fact that Tessa never really considered a relationship with him in the first book they were definitely more like friends and then it sort of sneaks up on her and you can again you can really see that happening so that I think is why I really like that part of it um I think that was all I really wanted to say I do like the actiony sort of scenes that we do get eventually in here um but the other stuff that is more like day-to-day -day stuff them quoting books that kind of stuff hi you like that camera huh <laughs> he's also being like shy or something he's not supposed to be over there really but like when I'm over here he's allowed to so I think he's just taking advantage as much as possible but yeah the day-to-day -day stuff is not as much my favorite um, because I am now comparing it to the first Immortal Instruments I had an epiphany a little bit while I was reading last night and stuff that I think the reason why I said that the infernal devices was my favorite more than the mortal instruments is because when I first read these I read them in publishing order yeah <laughs> I read them in publishing order which means I read one and then book four of the mortal instruments two book five of the mortal instruments three and six and I definitely remember not liking books four and five as much and so I think that's sort of what happened because again I feel like these are very very different than the first three mortal instruments they're not necessarily better or worse in any way except for those little like character things that I'm nitpicking but the first time I read it no we're not climbing up on the coffee table the first time I read it, I read it interspersed with the second half of the Mortal Instruments. And while I love book six of that, I did not really like book four or five. And I feel like that's why I remember loving these so much more. You know, that's how memory works. It's, it's all weird. Okay, but I think that's my update for now because I have not read any more this morning yet. I've been doing some like Goodreads updates and stuff on the computer and in my reading journal. So I haven't sat down to finish this yet. Um, I 
do believe I will be able to finish this because it is about 500 pages total and I'm at like 208 so I should at least finish this today in order to keep up with the way I'm reading so I will let you guys go because I should probably be reading okay so it is just past 10 p.m. I finished editing my video that is going up tomorrow I also just finished CCing it but I have also finished Clockwork Prince. Again, giving it five stars. I still really, really loved the book and the story, but I think I'm just having issues with Will's character again. I mean, I know we figure out all the stuff that's going on with him in this book, but some of the stuff he does just sort of rubs me the wrong way. And like, even though we know spoiler alert, that the curse is fake and everything like that. He's supposed to be able to love people and like want them to love him, but he's also selfish. And the fact that he is so selfish about certain things, and he is also, you know, trying to be less selfish, but I don't know, his personality and the way he acts is just not my thing as much. So that annoys me a little bit. I loved the fact that it was sort of a cliffhanger near the end. And um, I know, you know, we're gonna get more stuff in the third book, which I think I'm gonna try to pick up tonight. Like I said, it is already 10 and I'll be going to bed soon, but we'll, we'll see how much I can actually get done reading wise. Um, and then I also really love Charlotte and Henry in here. I love the fact that we get more of their relationship and it actually gets talked about more because of the fact that I know in I think it's the first book, people talk about how it was more of like a marriage of convenience for her to run the institute because it was not normally a woman's job. It was usually a male shadow hunter um, and that Henry likes to do inventions. Ooh, speaking of his inventions, I love the fact that we get to see certain things. So like, I think it was this book. I really can't remember anymore because it's been, you know, back to back reading, but it was either this book or at the end of the first one, they talk about the censor, which they use in the mortal instruments to sense demons. So he was inventing it and we know it works in the Mortal Instruments series, which I just love that like continuity stuff. It's great. So yeah, I'm gonna try and pick up Clockwork Princess tonight. We'll see how much I can get done and I will talk to you guys in the morning. You say hi to the camera. Yeah, you're on there. He's just staring. Okay, so it is actually right after lunch, um, but I did read like 50 something pages of Clockwork Princess last night after I had finished Clockwork Prince. So, you know, yeah, I'm on page 53. We're barely getting into it, but I remember this being my favorite book of the trilogy, so I'm very excited for that. But also, we have a package. This should be the Illumicrate edition for the August book, which the thing is, okay, so I didn't buy the August box. I only wanted the book, only because like shipping is so expensive, but the book that's in here is like one of my favorite books of the year, and um, I had to get it. So here it comes with a pin, which I did not know, but I'm very excited about, and it says World Walker, but it's glaring, so I'm gonna take it out. World Walker. These are done by Fable and Black, which I believe is now called Stacy McAvoy Kant. Like she changed the name of the company to her name. And then we have our book in our pouch. Oh my gosh, okay. I have not looked at any spoilers except for I knew what book it was based on the summary and I've already read it. But the sprayed edges are like hot pink. And so I'm very excited. Okay, here we go. The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. It says, on the back of the 380 realities that have been unlocked, Kara is dead in all but eight. This is a gorgeous book. So I have the original, like the US cover version, um, and the original UK one has this face, this profile on there, but it has like, I feel like it's spots like glittery-ish almost stuff, metallic-y stuff. 
Um, you playing with the box? But this one they did lines and like I said, like hot pink basically sprayed edges. Like I don't think it's a purple. I think it's definitely hot pink. And then under the dust jacket, here is our spine, which is a gorgeous spine. Very, very pretty. I'm just so happy I have this. This is literally one of my favorite books of the year. Um, I've talked about it in multiple videos and he, you're stealing my pin. You can't have the pin. It's a pin. You show them? Yeah. You take, you take in my stuff. Yeah. And plastic. You show, show the camera. But the pin is gorgeous, the book is gorgeous. I am so excited to have this. Um, like I said, I've read it, I loved it. I needed this copy. Um, I actually, I think, read it and then realized what the August book was going to be for a Lumicrate. And I don't get a Lumicrate um, because shipping, I think I mentioned that. And so it was one of those things where I was like, oh no, I'm never going to get this book. And then like you could apply for their wait list for, I think it was September's box, which I did and I did not get September's box, but they ended up emailing when they had opened up some spaces for the people on their wait list saying that they did have some book only August options open. I ran out of space on my memory card. I don't know what I was saying, but your head. Where's your tummy? Where's your toes? Can I have my pin back? Give it to mommy. Can I have it? It's a, it's a pin, you can't actually have it. Can I have it? I want my pin back. You can't keep it. Walks away, dude. You can't keep that. That's mommy's. But yeah, I don't remember what I was saying because the uh, the memory card got full and I had to delete some old stuff. I need to go through and delete stuff I have already done. But yeah, got the book. Um, I think I was talking about how I signed up for the September box or not the September box, but like the wait list for it. And then they had book only options for August and I jumped on that and then didn't even buy the September box. Um, I was just very very happy that I had the opportunity like it was not something I thought I was going to be able to do. I thought I was not going to be able to get it um, but I, I was and it's gorgeous so I'm very very happy with this. Okay I somehow need to get that pin from him. It is 2.30. He just woke up from a nap. Today is like the first and only time that he's actually done one nap. Lately, he's been pushing his naps back a little bit later, but he still would take a nap in the morning. But he didn't wake up this morning until like 7.30. And then he was very cranky at lunch, but he had some lunch and he took a nap and he slept for two hours. And so we're doing pretty good. I got up to page 380 in Clockwork Princess yesterday, which means I read over 300 pages, but I didn't quite hit my 341 goal. Um, but it just got way too late. And I'm really enjoying the book. I know I've said this before, um, but there's also like little bits and pieces that I think about more now um, than before. So this is the book where we get the lore of Parabatai being able to like feel. He wants back up on the couch even though he got down. You got down. Come on, come back up. Come on. Oh. Hi. <laughs> don't get back down if you don't walk down. Come here. Where we have the lore of Parabatai being able to like feel when the other one dies. And it's something that I thought about the first time I read this book. And we're going to put, again, spoilers at the bottom when I get to the spoilery part. But 
it's something that I really enjoyed as a lore aspect. However, in the third Mortal Instruments book, we never get any sort of hint that Alec can feel when Jace dies. And so it's one of those things where I've always been curious about that because it feels almost like the lore aspect came into the Shadowhunter world after that book and then this is the book where we really get told about it. Um, I know that there were some interview questions and stuff like that. Like I used to follow um, Cassandra Clare on Tumblr, which I don't like hardly ever go on Tumblr anymore, um, but I used to follow her on Tumblr and look at all the like Q&A questions and one of the questions was like, are we going to be able to know more about that um, from that third book? Um, after the fact since we never really got anything about it and I believe she said that she did put a little bit of that in the second half of the series or something about it I can't remember but from everything that I have read which I know there's a there's a few books that I have not read but everything that I have read I don't think she actually really went into any of that um, so that was just another little thing that I was thinking about again if I do come across her actually writing about that I will um, let you guys know but it was something that I was like hmm I would have liked I guess that to tie in a little bit better um, but I am really enjoying this book I just read a little bit more while he was napping but I don't know what page I'm on currently my goal for today is to finish Clockwork Princess hopefully then start City of Fallen Angels but I really don't know how many pages I even technically still have left in Clockwork Princess or how long it's going to take because I do also need to edit my Saturday video today and um, my husband's been having projects and meetings like all day today in the office so I haven't been able to go in there and edit quite yet. Usually I edit while he's napping and we have like a cot playpen area for him in the office that he sleeps in while I edit. Um, but because my husband has those meetings and everything, he's being loud. So he slept out here today. Um, and then, like I said, I am still reading Clockwork Princess. Another thing that I did want to mention is that I still do think this is my favorite of the three books. Um, I am a big ol' sucker for angst, but with a mostly happy ending. It doesn't have to be like a perfectly happy ending or anything like that, but like that's my overall, like what I would prefer from stories is like action adventure, angsty things, which is why I like slow burn romance so much, but like angsty things with a happy ending. So that's part of the reason I haven't read some of the other books and I will um, talk about that when I get closer to reading those because it's not, not anywhere near that yet, but I think that's why I like this one so much is we do have a lot more of like the angst and the pining and like Jem has a chronic illness he's dying it's just like all this stuff going on um, but overall we have a happy ending so um, I'm looking forward to getting through that like I said he just woke up so we're sort of cuddling right now I don't know when I'm gonna be able to edit or when I'm gonna be able to finish reading I will let you guys know but the Parabatai thing was something that I was thinking about last night because I really got to the part about that last night before I went to bed. Okay, so it is Saturday at like 2.30. Presley has just gone down for a nap. I did have to go to the grocery store earlier today and that's the main reason I haven't been able to update you guys yet because I actually had to like leave the house. Did wear my mask the whole time but then like I still do the thing where like as soon as you come back inside from being out somewhere, I take a shower, clean everything up, uh, and then we had lunch and everything like that. So Presley's sleeping. I did actually end up finishing Clockwork Princess. I know the title of these books. My brain is not quite working right now. Clockwork Princess last night. And again, I'm giving it five stars. I like this series. Um, I do feel like Cassandra Clare gets a little bit wordy in the Infernal Devices. I don't think it's necessarily as bad as some other historical type of books that I've read that I didn't like, but one of the things that I really liked in the first three books of the Mortal Instruments is it's very um, dialogue heavy. It's very quick and easy to read. 
but I feel like there was a lot more introspection and details of like what was happening in this trilogy and so it slowed it down a little bit not necessarily to its detriment but it's definitely a different dynamic than the mortal instruments one thing i do want to say though is the epilogue of clockwork princess because that was like the last thing obviously i read last night i love it is like a perfect epilogue it wraps up everything so so well i know we're gonna get more in this 1800s setting because we do have Chain of Gold, which follows some of the children of the people in this one. Um, but the epilogue, so, so well done. Now, I did finish this, like I said, last night. I only read 188 pages last night, which in any other month would be great. That's actually the least amount I've read so far in September. So normally that's a good reading day for me. Um, not so much now. So I am falling behind even more in my reading but I am going to be picking up City of Fallen Angels. So this is book number four. It is shorter than I think most of the Infernal Devices. Um, this is like just over 400-ish pages. I'm hoping to read quite a bit of this today um, but I do need to go and start editing this vlog so I don't have to do it all tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to do right now while Presley is napping. I'm going to go edit some of this and then start this. I am not necessarily looking forward to it because I do remember books four and five being my least favorite of the Mortal Instruments series. Definitely necessary on the way to book six because I remember loving book six, but I don't remember liking these as much. However, I think I still gave them five stars on Goodreads. If any of my ratings are going to change in this series, I feel like it's going to be these two books, but we'll have to see. Okay, it is Sunday morning. We have City of Fallen Angels here. I did not meet my goal for the day at all yesterday. Um, part of it was that I edited most of this vlog and that took a while. And then I cooked dinner and that took a little while. And I just didn't have too much motivation to read last night. I did end up reading some. But then I ended up going to bed at like 11.30 because, yeah. Uh, and then Presley, for the last few days, has just been very sort of tossing and turning at night. And because he sleeps with us, that means I wake up a lot more. So I am actually on page 163. Again, if this was a normal reading month, that would not be horrible. But the fact that I did not hit my goal for the last couple days and I was already behind, yeah. Um, today is Sunday. This the 163 pages that I did read felt like it went by pretty darn quickly, so I have my goal to at least finish this. If I can get a start on City of Lost Souls, I will do that. Um, but I don't know. Um, one thing I did want to show you guys, I have not filled in yesterday's information yet, but here is a like sneak peek sort of look at my reading journal. So this has been like basically... A book a couple days, one day, a couple days, a day, and a bit. Because, like, if it's only a little bit at the end after or something, I'm trying to color it based on the majority. However, on the 8th, I did basically read, like, half and half, as you can sort of see here. And I haven't put in the City of Fallen Angels color yet. I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. Um, in a perfect world, if I was hitting my numbers every day, I should be off the chart every day. I'm not, but it's not horrible. So, City of Fallen Angels is going to be a bright green color. So that'll be the next stuff that we put on. The thing is, I'm not disliking City of Fallen Angels as much as I thought I had disliked it the first time. I remember not liking books four and five in the Mortal Instruments as much. Not, not to say that, that I hate them, but as much. And so far, that 163 pages hasn't been horrible. I will say that I do find Simon a little bit out of character in the fact that he's trying to date like two girls at once. And he always seemed like the person that took people's feelings into consideration, was more aware of that. But it could also be that he never had a date really before. Um, but it just was always something that bugged me a little bit about 
him in that part of the book. Um, and then one other thing, we do have mention of a wedding in this book as well as a wedding in Clockwork Princess. And I'm finding it very interesting in here because in this book, they talk about the differences between mundane culture and shadow hunter culture. And one of the things they mention is that in mundane culture, you're not supposed to see the bride in her, you know, wedding dress if you're the groom, and that shadow hunters don't do that. But in Clockwork Princess, there is a scene where the bride is in her wedding dress and the groom comes in and the other person who is with her, like trying the dress on, shoes her to a different part of the room because you're not supposed to see the bride in the wedding dress and they're talking about shadow hunter stuff so it's it's i don't know if that is a tradition that just sort of fell out of use in the shadow hunter thing from the 1800s to 2007 but i did think that was interesting because clockwork princess was the book i read right before this one and so the fact that they have contradicting information about weddings in here and I read them like back to back. It was just something that was interesting to me. Um, I mean, there's there's little bits and pieces in here every so often that I feel like Cassandra Clare added information or forgot other information, but they're not like a detriment to the story, so it's okay. But that was one of the ones that I thought was interesting. So now I'm gonna try and read so that I can update you guys at least one more time before the end of the day, because then I need to finish this vlog. Um, so yeah, goal, reading the book. Hi, baby. So he just woke up from his nap. I have been reading a little bit more of City of Fallen Angels. I'm currently on page, I think it was 296, and actually like just as I was reading it, and just as he woke up, I came to a part where I think I need to talk a little bit about it again. I'm still actually really liking this book um, more than I remembered liking it. So I guess I can understand where I gave the five star rating. This is a darker book than some of the previous ones, only in the fact that I do believe this one deals more with like actual like demon stuff and not just a rogue shadow hunter, you know, doing his thing. So it is a slightly different dynamic. Um, but that was not the main thing that I wanted to talk about, but it was just, you know, something. Um, but I read in last week's vlog, The Red Scrolls of Magic, which came out last year. And I reread it because I read it last year, but I read it in between books three of The Mortal Instrument and book one of The Infernal Devices. So in between City of Glass and Clockwork Angel. And then this one obviously is book number four. So this takes place after City of Glass. The reason I read Red Scrolls of Magic in between is that that one takes place sort of at the beginning of this one. Magnus and Alaric are off on a European vacation at the beginning of this book and they don't come in until more than halfway through. But I am now at a part where Magnus and Alec are together and there's other people around them and apparently Alec has just sort of found out that Magnus is by because Camille shows up who is one of Magnus's previous love interests in the Infernal Devices series. But in the Red Scrolls of Magic, it appears that Alec knew already that Magnus was bisexual because he asks another lady about, were you in a relationship previously with Magnus? And so, I know that these books were written quite far apart. Like this book here, City of Fallen Angels, it came out in 2011. Red Scrolls of Magic came out in 2019. But timeline wise, Red Scrolls of Magic happens at the very beginning of this book. But the characterizations of Alec, especially Magnus a little bit, but mostly Alec, don't feel like they fit continuity wise. Um, Alec in this book is a little bit jealous. He's, you know, 18. Magnus is, I think we talked about this earlier, probably like 300 or 400. And he's discovering that Magnus had quite a few relationships before he got with Alec. But Alec was definitely more sure of himself, it felt like, 
in Red Scrolls of Magic. Also, they just did that whole book which had stuff going on where they sort of grew quite close in their relationship and yet we jump back to this one where it feels like Magnus is sort of hiding stuff from Alec. Not fully, he just doesn't want to talk about his past, but then Alec is, you know, curious and a little bit jealous and it just doesn't quite fit emotionally. Like, I can't describe it fully. To me, like, yeah, I guess it's the emotional, the aura of the books. They don't quite fit together for me. And so that is obviously not something I ever would have thought about this one, but since I have read Red Scrolls of Magic so close to this, and it's been a few years since I read this one originally, um, or the last time actually, I think I've read this book probably like twice, it's been a while. And so because of that, I am now thinking and seeing all these contradictions that I wasn't previously. It's nothing big. Um, but I knew some of this stuff was going to come in books four and five that I wasn't enjoying as much, and one of it was always, um, Alec sort of being insecure, and it was never a big thing, but now, especially after having read Red Scrolls of Magic, it feels a little bit more out of place than it did before. Hi! Okay, well I still need to read more today. This top part is what I have left. I think I have just over like 120, 130 pages left. So I'm gonna definitely finish this. I'm gonna hope to give you guys another update soon. Um, it's about 3.40, but I still need to finish this vlog today to get it up tomorrow, so yeah. Okay, it is 6 p.m. I just finished City of Fallen Angels. We are about to have dinner, but this is going to be my last update for this vlog because I need some time to actually finish the vlog and then upload it for tomorrow. So even though I probably will try to pick up City of Lost Souls tonight, you won't see it until next week. I, like I said before when I was talking to you guys, I actually didn't mind this as much as I thought. However, once we got to the last, like, third, I think, of this book, um, I definitely started to see the foreshadowing and, like, bits and pieces of stuff that's going to happen in the next book that I didn't like as much. Like, we have some characterization choices that I just don't like as much. We have reasons for them, but it's not really my thing. And it does end sort of on a cliffhanger to make you want to pick up the next one. So I think overall, even though on Goodreads previously, I have rated this a five stars. I think this one would probably be closer to a four. I do feel like potentially the first book, so like City of Bones and Clockwork Angel, like the first two books in like those series might be closer to four and a half because I do feel like those are the lower ones of my five stars. But this one is my least favorite so far. It wasn't bad in any sort of way exactly, except for it wasn't my favorite, so it's not quite a five star. But yeah, it's just those character choices that there are reasons, but they're not my favorite. So like a little bit of Simon at the very beginning, although he turns more, you know, original Simon-like later. Um, we had some Jace choices, we have some Alec choices, just things that Cassandra Clare did with the characters that I don't like as much. So yeah, that's my update for this vlog because like I said, we're gonna have dinner and I need to edit. So I will read more next week.